fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! The grim gray walls of the territorial prison rose starkly above the swirling mists of a dark night. The fog crawled thickly into the prison yard and settled over it like a heavy blanket. It was a perfect night for a jailbreak, and the guards on the walls peered tensely into the mists and held their rifles in readiness. But alert as they were, the heavy breathing and stealthy movements of two men below them went unnoticed. For dressed in the rough clothes of convicts, these men were digging a tunnel underground, scraping the earth with hand-shaped tin by the flickering light of a candle, and transporting the loose dirt out of their way in a wooden crate. Hey, this is far ahead as we turn, will it be? You sure? You saw me pace the distance, didn't you? Forty-nine paces from our cell to here. This last crate of dirt we dug makes 50. 49 paces from our cell to the wall. Maybe you ought to dig ahead some more, Red. Nothing doing. My back's almost breaking from all the digging we've been doing. I'm busting out of this who's got it. But, Red, we... Well, yeah, I figure we're three feet outside the wall. From now on, we tunnel straight up. Just as you say. Take this crate of dirt back and dump it. Then give me a hand here. We're heading for the wide open spaces. The guards don't suspect a thing. <laughs> that you, Tom? Yeah. Some night, ain't it? Uh, fierce. The fog is so thick I can't see more than ten feet in front of me. Uh, I don't know what ever made me become a prison guard anyway, Wally. Standing in the cold and wet ain't exactly my idea of fun. Mine either. I reckon we'll be relieved for long, though. I hope so. A cup of coffee would be mighty good right now. I remember... What's the matter? Oh, I don't know. I thought I heard something. There it is again. Yeah, I heard it, too. Tom, look outside the wall. There's a hole in the ground. Oh, I wonder what... Oh, it's a tunnel. See, there's somebody coming out it's of it. It's a jailbreak. Come on. There's two of them. Get your hands up. We've got you covered. They got us, Red. Me, look out, Tommy's throwing a knife. Oh, oh. Tom. Grab his gun, Libby. They got it. Blast you. You killed him. I'll show you. Oh. Better hold him. Out of here, Libby. Quick. Stop. This fog. Can't see a thing. I've got to get him for what they did to Tom. Hey, 
I can't run another step, Red. You've got to, you fool. We can't stay here. They'll be coming after us. I can't help it. I've got to stop and get my breath. Now hold on till we get to the top of this ridge. You'll have to give me a hand. All right. Oh, must be pretty near daylight. That ain't all. Fog's lifting. We're spotted in these jail clothes. We're finished. Maybe we can change them for other outfits somewhere. Oh, we've got to. Got to get another gun, too. You sure you're heading in the direction of Ben Weatherly's ranch? Yeah. Even in the fog, I recognize some landmarks. I heard he bought a place in Deep Valley. Deep Valley's where we're aiming. So our, our old partner's retiring on his stolen riches, huh? If he'd stuck by us in that stage hold up, we might never have been caught. He ran out on us. Yeah. All the gold we risked our necks for went with him. How long ago was it? I've lost track of time. Ten years. Ben's been living off the fat of the land. Living off money that belongs to you and me. While we've rotted in jail. Well, now we're free. And we're getting it back. We'll talk about that when we get there. Hey, look. What do you see? Lights. Must be a town down below. Not more than a mile away, gentlemen. Listen. Hounds. They're on a trail. Start moving fast. Maybe we can reach the town and hide there. In town, Lem Hopkins had opened his store early to check over some newly arrived stock. Well, let me see now. That's ten new harness, two dozen blankets, six boats calico. That dog gone, that Seth, he's forgot to bring the charter back again. He'd forget his head if them big ears of his didn't flap in his face to remind him of it. Suddenly, he heard soft footfalls. Uh, who is it? Come into the light where I can see you. Howdy. What can I... Crooks, from the jail. Move and we'll drill you. Uh, what do you want? Clothes, and we want them fast. Here they are, right on the rack. All right, grab yourself an outfit, Limpy. I'll keep this hombre in my gun sight. I'm with you in a minute. Yeah, they're fancy shooting irons you got in that case, mister. Uh, that's right. The best in the county, some of them. You don't say. I'll just help myself to a pair of six guns. Give me one of them gun belts and the ammunition for these irons. Doggone if I will. Those are mighty expensive guns, and I don't aim for you to... <coughs> oh! Speak when you're spoken to. Now get moving. I'll take over, Red. Go pick yourself a new outfit. <laughs> you look like a dude, Limpy. It's the hounds. Yeah, they found our trail again. Scrap them clothes quick. We gotta get out of here. Now take care of the old man. Rustle the cash out of that drawer, Pop, and hand it over. By thunder, you thieving pole cats have taken all you're going to get from me. I won't That's a solely you... tongue you've got. Tuck it away if you want to keep it. Why, you... Get the cash. Maybe. Yeah? Two horses are hitched out back. I can see them from this window. You must have been born under a lucky star, Red. That's the best break we've had yet. <laughs> With them cayuses under us, them hounds can bark their heads off. They'll never lay a nose on us. Now hurry up. They're getting close. Uh, yeah, I'm finished. Get the cash and let's hightail it. Step lively, Pop. Shove that cash across the counter if you want to stay perpendicular. You ornery snakes. I told you before I wasn't going to give you... Let me pull the gun. Stubborn old cuss. <laughs> Boys! Hoser fire. They're out of range. Take more and hounds to catch them now. They stole horses for their getaway. Uh, sheriff. Sheriff. Hold on that time or the sheriff's coming now. Lem, Lem, where are you? Heard guns over here, Sheriff. Lem, he's been shot. Jailbirds. Changed clothes. Took two of my prize guns. Stole cash. I'll get them, Lem. I'll get him a turn in my star. One of them. I. I... Take a look at him, Tonto. Uh, Masked and an Indian. Where'd they come from? I don't know. Uh, him past help. Him dead. Who in tarnation are you two, anyway? That's not important, Sheriff. The thing that matters is to catch the murderers. It's easier said than done, mister. They're both strangers to me. One outlaw walk with limp. Are you sure, Tonto? Ah. Uh. Me look at ground in back where outlaws mount horses. Fine prints. One man takes shorter stride with one foot than with other. I see. The engine's right. Who are you? Prison guard. I've trailed them jailbirds all the way from the territorial prison, and then they escaped on horses. Horses? 
Well, one of them's mine. I had them hitched right out in back of here. Those low-down horse thieves. Who are the outlaws? Red Travis and Limpy Rawlings. They killed a guard when they got away. My best friend. Red Travis and Limpy Rawlings, huh? Ah. Limpy outlaw who walketh short stride. Yeah. Hey, I remember them, too. They're the ones that held up the Overland stage along with Ben Weatherly about ten years ago. Robbed it of $30,000 in gold. You mean Ben Weatherly, the rancher who lives in Deep Valley? That's the one. I reckon that was long before you became a prison guard. Yeah. Ben Weatherly. Why, he's the richest rancher in the valley. Uh, you're right. But every cent he's made is an honest penny. Ben got away with the gold when his pards were caught, but he didn't keep it. Gave the whole 30000 back to the Overland Express. Oh? Huh? The way lay in that stage was his first and last crooked job. He's been on the square ever since. Come on, fellow. Uh, we catch crook plenty quick. Hey, hey, hold up there. I want to ask you a few questions. Sure, if we're going to Deep Valley to visit Ben Weatherly's ranch. You're going nowhere till I say so. <laughs> Delayed by the law, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan, the masked man's 14-year-old nephew, headed their horses for Deep Valley. Meanwhile, Red and Limpy, the outlaws they sought, reined their mounts up before Ben Weatherly's ranch. They eased their guns in their holsters and walked up the path to the ranch house. Good morning. I... Oh, did you come to see my father? Yeah, we came to see your father. Walk backwards and don't make any wrong moves with that pretty mouth of yours. Guns, you're, you're outlaws. Who is it, Betty? I, I don't know. I'm expecting red and limpy. <laughs> oh, ain't that touching. After all these years, he remembers us, limpy. He'll remember us even more before we go. Dad, who, who are these men? We're old... Uh, Business partners, your pa's, miss. Ain't that so, Ben? Why, uh, yes, I... Well, you don't seem very glad to see us, Ben. Why, of course he is, Limpy. He's been hoping we'd show up for ten years now. So as he can make us a tidy little present of $30,000. Dad, I... I don't understand. We're here to collect, Ben. Pronto. You're too late. Ten years too late. I return the gold to the Overland Express Company... The people who owned it. Even a half-wit could think of a better story than that. The gold must have gone to your head. It's true, I tell you. Sure. And the Overland Express was so overflowing with gratitude, they rewarded you with this expensive ranch. And a couple of thousand head of steers we saw grazing on your land when we rode up. This ranch represents my own money. I made it honestly. Not a cent of it came from the gold we stole. Oh, Dad. He talks like he believes it, Limpy. Yeah. We should have had more sense than to take a greenhorn like him along for the job anyway. We had to pick one with an honest streak. Maybe so. But if we don't get the 30000 one way, we'll get it another. What do you mean? Red, somebody coming. See what it is. Three horsemen. Masked man, an engine, and a kid. What? Riding a white horse. That's him, all right. Who? The Lone Ranger. He's on our trail. The Lone... What'll we do? I'll show you. You two, come here. Take them guns from the wall and stand here at the windows. When I give the word, we'll give that mask hombre the hottest reception he ever got, all four of us. And don't get any funny notions with them guns. Remember, I'm standing behind you. All right, let them have it. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. As guns blazed from the windows of Ben Weatherly's ranch house, the Lone Ranger, Tonto and Dan, quickly reined up behind a clump of boulders which shielded them from the gunfire. Oh, who's the... Oh, 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 that was a tight squeeze. Uh, outlaw wait for us. Almost catch us and open. They sure are throwing a lot of lead for just two of them. Four people are shooting, Dan. Uh, that's right. Four? But who else would shoot at us beside the convicts? Ben Weatherly and someone else are apparently being forced to shoot. Their bullets are always aimed at the dirt. Gosh, that's so. I see now. We've got to get in that house. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got plan? Oh, not exactly. <laughs> Take care of Silver Tonto. I'm going to see how close I can get by crawling through this tall grass. Meanwhile, in the ranch house, Red and Limpy and their two prisoners, Ben Weatherly and his daughter Betty, kept up their fire. All right, you two, put down them guns. Tie the girl's hands with that curtain cord, Limpy. No. Stand still, you. You hit my daughter again. Shut up. What are you going to do with her? We've got $30,000 coming to us, Ben. I mean to see that we get it. I don't understand. We're taking the girl with us. Kidnapping. That's it. We're holding her for ransom. $30,000 $30,000 worth. And we're giving you till midnight to pay up. But I, I can't possibly get that much money by midnight. You'd better. This is the last you see of your daughter. Oh, damn! You fiend! Careful, Ben. I've got an itching trigger finger. Where shall I bring the money? Our old hideout. Crick Cave. And make sure you come along. Yeah. One word to the lone ranger or the sheriff and we'll riddle the girl. I understand. That's fine. This will make sure you do. Dad! What was that for, Red? To cover your getaway with the girl. I don't say it. Pump some more slugs out this window with me. I aim for the Lone Ranger to keep his distance as long as possible. I'm listening. That mask hombre has got a horse that runs like the wind. If we left Ben to tell him where we were heading for, the Lone Ranger would overtake us before we got there. I still don't get... The Lone Ranger doesn't know me, and I figure he doesn't know Ben. I aim to make sure you and the girl get to the hideout by posing as Ben and stalling him off. I got you. All right, help me drag Ben to the next room. There. Now hightail it with the girl out the back way. You'll find horses in the corral. Be waiting for you at the hideout, Red. Yeah, I'll cover your getaway by fixing the low ranger's attention in front here. I, uh, I had to shoot. The outlaws threatened to kill me if I didn't. Oh? I thought they were still here. They were standing behind me. I see. They must have escaped out the back. Betty. Betty, they've taken her with them. They kidnapped her. Betty? My daughter. I'm Ben Weatherly. This is my ranch. You all right? Yes, Dan. Be right. As soon as shooting stops. Bring your horses around back. I want to have a look. The outlaws escaped this way, taking a girl with them. Ah. There are girls' tracks. Yeah, and they're the prints of the one that walks with the lamp. See, he takes a shorter stride with one foot than with the other. Ah, uh-huh. that's right, Dan. The tracks of the second outlaw are missing. Golly, that's so. But what do you suppose yeah, happened? Here, here where girl and Limpy mount horses. But only two horses. We not see trail a second bandit anywhere. He didn't make any tracks, Tonto. What you mean? There isn't time to explain. Follow the trail left by Limpy and the girl, both of you. I'll join you later. Uh-huh. You ready, Dan? You bet. Get him up, scout! Get up there, boy. Returning to the ranch house, the Lone Rangers believed that the man he had talked to was the second outlaw was confirmed by the latter's absence. A glance at the hitching rail showed that he had escaped on one of the horses the convicts had stolen. Suddenly, the masked man heard a groan. Oh, hell! Hell. Here, drink this water. You're Ben Weatherly? Yes, I am. You're a mask. I'm not an outlaw. Yes, I I know you're not. I heard Red talking about you. You're the Lone Ranger. I want to help you. No, I I don't want your help. I don't understand. Your daughter's in danger. You think I know? That's why I mustn't endanger her more by asking for help. 
I want my daughter returned to me alive. I see. Now, I've got to raise a ransom money. How much? $30,000 by midnight. Can you raise it? I don't know. Where are you to take the money? Creek Cave. Creek Cave, huh? I know that place. I've got to raise the cash. If I don't, they'll kill Betty. Ben, if you'll trust me, I can save your daughter whether you raise the ransom money or not. I, I don't know what to say. What's more, I think I can trap the outlaws. Well, I... What do you say, Ben? I, all right, I'll do it. I don't know what it is, but something about you makes me feel it'll be safer to trust you. What do you want me to do? Are you strong enough to ride to town and see the sheriff? Yeah. Get him to round up a few men and bring some blasting powder to Creek Cave tonight. I'll meet you on the trail. Blasting powder? What are you planning to do? Never mind that now. Arrange to be near the cave at 11 o'clock. I savvy. Good. Adios. I don't know what it is, but that masked man's got me believing that Betty's as good as saved already. Late that afternoon, the hoof prints which Tonto and Dan were trailing swerved toward the bank of a creek and then ran parallel until they suddenly branched off along a narrow ravine which ended in a slope. At the bottom of the slope was an opening, just big enough to admit a man crawling on his hands and knees, which marked the mouth of a cave. Tonto quickly drew rein, and in a moment, Dan followed suit. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, 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 fella. What is it, Tonto? Why are we stopping? We leave horses and clump of trees here. Go ahead on foot. On foot? Well, we don't know how much further the trail will take us. Trail not go far now. Limpy and girl go in cave. Oh. You mean that hole on the slope is the mouth of a cave? Uh, that creek cave. Don't you know it? It's plenty big inside, but entrance plenty small. <laughs> Golly, it doesn't look much larger than a, well, a gopher hole. Uh, you come. You really think Limpy and Betty are inside the cave? Uh, hoof prints make tracks by ravine. You look. Uh, yeah, you're right. They're leading right up to the hole on the slope. Shh. Better be talking whisper now. Yeah. Right here at the entrance. Golly, what do you think we Ice have? Ice them hands. What? You? It's the outlaw, the other one. I thought you were plenty smart trailing Limpy and the girl here, huh? Well, now that you're here, I'd be plumb sorry if you missed seeing them. Start crawling into that cave. <laughs> Let me. Brought a couple of guests. The engine and the kid. Well, ain't this cozy. We'll have to make him right at home, Red. Yeah. I aim to make this one visit they won't forget. Night lay like a heavy pall over the valley. In Creek Cave, Limpy fed logs to a fire whose smoke was sucked through a winding tunnel through the roof of the cavern. Sitting watchfully near the small slit which marked the entrance was Red... And sitting with her hands tied were Betty, Tonto, and Dan. What time is it, Limpy? Uh, uh, Eleven. Hmm. One hour between us and $30,000. But if he don't come... He'll come. He's crazy about his daughter. Ben wouldn't let a measly 30000 stand between Betty and sudden death. You fiends! I, I hope he doesn't come. Shut up. Let her talk, Limpy. It don't mean anything. Yeah, it does to me. Ain't so sure Ben ain't planning to trick us. Don't be a fool. As long as we've got the girl, he'll squeeze his bank account dry. My father hasn't got $30,000. We know different. Oh, don't give up, Betty. The Lone Ranger will see your dad through. That's right. You hear that, Limpy? They think the Lone Ranger's got to turn him loose. Well, maybe they're right. If the engine and the kid trail is here, the masked man can do it too. What if he does? He won't make a move when he knows we're holding his two sidekicks. He'll be in the same boat with Ben. Yeah, you don't know him. Button your mouth, you. <laughs> take it easy, Limpy. You've got a case of nerves. Red. Yeah? What's that noise outside? Sounds like a bird. Yeah, that's just what it is, Limpy, a bird. <laughs> yes, sir, Jumpy, you're trying to make things out what they ain't. Meanwhile, in a grove of trees not far from the cave, the Lone Ranger conferred with Ben, the sheriff, the prison guard, and the posse. The plain fact is we got them two convicts holed up. Ain't that right? Yeah. There isn't but one way out of Creek Cave. And that's the way in. Well, then I say let's rush them pole cats before they know what hit them. You can't do that, Sheriff. Well, why not? The entrance is too narrow. But a man here would enter that cave alive. He's right. Red and Limpy would pick us all off. Any attack on the cave would mean certain death for Betty, for Toto and Dan. What makes you think the engine and the boy are in the cave? I found their horses tethered near here. They weren't prisoners. They'd be here helping to rescue Betty. That's got me stumped. 
If we don't rescue them before midnight, they'll die anyway. I have a plan. Well, let's hear it. You brought the blasting powder? Yeah, just like Ben here told me to. But of all the fool notions, I... Now listen. I... Quickly, the Lone Ranger described his plan, and the men divided into two groups to carry it out. The first group dug a hole in the bank, which barred the creek water from coursing through the narrow ravine and planted blasting powder. The second group dug a hole in the slope, which formed the back of the cave, and filled it with blasting powder, too. Then at a word from the masked man, the first explosion was set off. And the creek water rushed through the narrow ravine straight for the mouth of the cave. Look, the water's almost filled the ravines heading for the cave. Betty, she'll be trapped. They'll all be drowned. Oh, they won't, Ben. Coursing swiftly through the narrow ravine, the creek water rapidly lapped at the rocky slopes until it almost filled the basin. Greedily finding an outlet in the tunnel which led to Creek Cave, the water rushed through it and into the cavern. Water's rushing through the tunnel. Come on, let's get ready for him. Listen. Muffled shouts came from the cave as the water plunged through the tunnel and rapidly filled the cavern. Desperately keeping afloat, the outlaws, Betty, Tonto, and Dan, suddenly saw the roof of the cave but a few inches from them with the water fast filling the gap. That's Betty. Let me go to her. Let me go. Fire the powder. Just when it seemed as if Betty, Tonto, Dan, and the two outlaws would be drowned by the rushing torrent, the Lone Ranger admitted the cave. The second explosion ran a gap in the back of the cavern. The suddenly released creek water carried the outlaws and their prisoners through the gap as if on the crest of a wave. Red, I got a pair of bracelets for you that'll fit mighty fine. Don't make them over either of you. Or I might forget myself and drill you for a knife and town. Betty, Betty, are you all right? Oh, Dad, yeah. yes, I, I'm all right. I'm fine. Here, I'll get these ropes off you. I'll attend to these two. You aren't hurt, are you, Dan? Oh, gosh, no. Tonto and I rode the wave together. Uh-huh. We get along fine. Uh, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The masked man saw there was only one way to get you murder and pull cats out of that cave without risking the lives of your prisoners. You mean... You mean riding us out of the cave on that creek water was it the Lone Ranger's idea? Right. Well, Silver! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>